Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be wrapping it up when it comes to hypothyroidism. And the last topic on this series will be Hashimoto's encephalopathy. Hashimoto's encephalopathy, and that will form part seven of seven. So if you haven't listened to parts one, two, three, four, five, and six, please kindly do. Okay, let's go. Hmm. Hashimoto's encephalopathy is a rare disease. It's a rare situation, it's a rare condition. Like the name depicts, is associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. But something is good here. And someone is asking me, what could be good here? It is steroid responsive. It is steroid responsive. So once you know this is Hashimoto's encephalopathy and you can grab your steroid, then you are good. There's increased antithyroid antibodies. And of course, that is the proof that the encephalopathy here is not that of hepatic or uremic. It is Hashimoto's. Why that? Antithyroid antibodies are here. And you're not going to find that in hepatic encephalopathy. You will not find that in uremic encephalopathy. You will not find that in hypoglycemic coma. You will not find that in hypoglycemic coma. Thyroid function test will be done here. And the picture will be that of hypothyroidism. But, but, not before, it could be euthyroid. Okay. Before we make this diagnosis, we are sure we are dealing with thyroid related problem. Okay. Like I've just said in the last few minutes, thyroid autoantibodies will be present. No other cause or causes of encephalopathy in this individual. So you rule out the rest possible encephalopathy scenarios. And this is going to be very common in women compared to men. And possibility of HLA B8 DRW3 positivity is right here. Okay, the pathophysiology is unclear, but there's that assumption that this could be as a result of toxic effect of thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay, we're looking for clinical features here, right? Mm -hmm. You are going to find loss, and loss of them will be about apothyroidism. So, if you're saying, okay, guys, I have a patient that I'm suspecting Hashimoto's encephalopathy in him or her, what are the clinical features you think I'm going to get? The answer should include all possible clinical features of hypothyroidism. You can check my channel for that. So, I will not waste your time going over that right here. So, you can check my channel. For clinical features of hypothyroidism, A to Z, already published. Then you can see goiter. That will be painless. You could see some clinical hypothyroidism that will later you know, evolve to overt hypothyroidism. With increasing destruction of the thyroid gland, the thyroid gland will shrink and the goiter will disappear. It depends on the stage that. The distortion has reached before the encephalopathy sets in and the individual is presenting before you. So you may or not see goiter. Additional symptoms or additional clinical features here will be the following because now the clinical features have moved away from just being hypothyroidic state or mesedema coma. Now we are talking of Hashimoto's encephalopathy. So in addition to all those clinical features, we are likely going to find a situation where the presentation will be acute, 
or some acute confusion. So there'll be confusion. There'll be altered level or changes in level of consciousness. You might be dealing with focal or generalized toning cloning seizures. You might be having status epilepticals at hand. And when you have your reflex armor, you could get a paraplegia. Still on additional clinical features above those ones you're going to pick in hypothyroidism. You could have psychosis here. You may have visual hallucination and paranoid delusion with myoclonus. How do we make the diagnosis? Of course, correct thorough history. Past medical history, particularly of autoimmune diseases. Remember, I have said before now that if you pick one autoimmune disease, be suspicious that the individual will have more than one autoimmune disease. So someone with surgery syndrome, with systemic lupus erythematosus, or celiac disease, or pernicious anemia, or rheumatoid arthritis, now having Hashimoto's thyroiditis with encephalopathy, right? Find out more. Family history of thyroid disease. And of course, history of thyroid disease in this particular patient. Hepatic encephalopathy in this patient. Uremic encephalopathy. You have to rule that out hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia leading to coma, find out. Any trauma right now, mm -hmm. street drugs or even prescribed medications, find out. Any psychiatry disease before now, because we've just gone through additional clinical features that could be delusion and psychosis, so find out. And of course, thorough physical examination. Diagnosis. Okay, this is interesting, right? First of all, after history and physical examination, and you are likely not becoming sure this is Hashimoto's encephalopathy. Okay, you rule out other causes of encephalopathy. Let's have lumbar puncture done. Okay, be sure. You've ruled out increased intracranial pressure. If you are suspicious of that, have your CT held down before lumbar puncture. Okay. Lumbar puncture, and you tap the CSF. What are you looking for? The presence of antithyroid antibodies. That will be the clue to Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And you're going to get that. If you don't get that, it is not Hashimoto's encephalopathy. Because there'll be no signs of infection in CSL. Because you've been you know, having your bacteria level, the viral level, maybe mycobacterium and protein, glucose. You're not going to find that here. Signs of no placing in, in, in CSL, not here. All you're looking for, and that you're going to get, is the presence of increased antithyroid antibodies. And with that, you are you now becoming double sure. This is Hashimoto's encephalopathy. Okay, secondly, we'll see how our thyroid function test done. The thyroid function test may reveal some critical hypothyroidism, maybe overall hypothyroidism, could even be hyperthyroid state. Why a small portion will give you the features of your thyroid. So, just have open heart. The fact that this is Hashimoto's encephalopathy is not saying uh, absolutely this is hypothyroidism. No. It could be, it could be subclinical, it could be hypothyroid, and it could be your thyroid. Thirdly, you now want to do something. Let me test immunosuppressants in this individual. Do you know what you're going to get? You're going to get a good outcome. There you go. Then you can now label this patient 
This is Hashimoto's encephalopathy. Finally, because you want to do a thorough job in this patient, right? You don't want him to come back and come down again with this problem quickly. Rule out other problems here. Yeah? So you could have laboratory and radiological investigations done. Complete blood count, electrolyte, glucose, liver function test, renal function test, toxicological screen. Okay? Because we are talking about someone having psychosis, illusion, you know, decreased level of consciousness, coma, and so on. Mm -hmm. Rule out street drugs and even other prescribed medications that could give problems. Rhine blood, microscopic cultural sensitivity, and you can hook up your EEG, but you are going to get no specific EEG pattern here. You can have MRI done or CT scan particularly of the head. Okay, treatment. Oh, yeah. All we need is medications that will suppress the immunity. So immunosuppressants. So you could start with methylprednisolone, could use as a tapering after that, intravenous immunoglobulin or plasma phoresis. And with that, I've come to the end of part seven of seven. And that will cap it all as the end of our presentations on hypothyroidism. Thanks for following me so far. Thanks for listening to all the series. And from part one to seven, I believe you have no or few questions to ask anyone ever when it comes to hypothyroidism. Remember to share, remember to subscribe. I appreciate it.